good look at a question that deals with entropy at first and then it moves into Kc, the equilibrium constant, in the second part of the question. So if I scroll through, you have a look at the question and then have a go and I'll go through the answers. So first part, why does the reaction have a negative entropy change? Next part of the question, we're given three of the four standard entropies for the substances in the equation, and we've got to calculate the standard entropy for hydrogen. Next part, we have to explain with a calculation whether the reaction is feasible at 25 degrees C. and then explain with another calculation the significance of temperatures above this 1154 degrees C temperature. And now the KC part of the question starts. So we've got the equilibrium, SO2, O2 and SO3. We've got some initial quantities in moles of SO2 and O2. We're told the volume of the mixture and it is allowed to reach equilibrium at constant temperature and at equilibrium 82% of the SO2 has been converted to SO3. So ultimately we have to calculate Kc but it does give us a couple of clues where we've got to calculate the concentrations of SO2, O2 and SO3. Next part of the question, we have to explain what would happen to the pressure as the system was allowed to reach equilibrium. Next part, we're told that Kc, the value for Kc, decreases with increasing temperature. So we need to use that information to predict the sign of the enthalpy change for the forward reaction and then state the effect on the equilibrium yield of SO3 of increasing the temperature at constant pressure. And the very last part of the question, the chemist repeated the experiment at the same temperature with one mole of SO2 and an excess of oxygen now. The gas mixture was still compressed at that same volume of 250 cm cubed. In terms of Kc, state and explain how the equilibrium yield of SO3 would be different from the yield in the first experiment. So why does the reaction have a negative entropy change? It all comes down to the fact that we're going from 5 moles of gas on the left to 3 moles of gas on the right. Calculating the standard entropy for hydrogen now. So we're given the delta S, there it is there, minus 164. And we have to work out the value for the hydrogen the entropy for hydrogen. So there's my little reminder, SPA, entropy, S, product minus reactants. And so we, there's the delta S. There's the sum of the entropies of the products. So that's the CH4 and the 2H2Ss. And we're taking away from that 4 moles of hydrogen, so that's our unknown, plus the 238 for CS2. So anyway, it, it all rearranges to 4x, 4 hydrogens, comes out at 524, so 1 hydrogen is a quarter of that, 131. Explain with the calculation whether this reaction is feasible at 25C. So it's a delta G expression, and we are looking for, if it's feasible, a negative delta G. So you can see that I've got a little reminder to myself that I must change the delta S into kilojoules because my delta H, which is up here, that's already in kilojoules. So this joules here needs to go to kilojoules. And the temperature can't stay in Celsius, it has to go to Kelvin. So we need to add 273 onto 25, so we get 298 Kelvin. So delta G comes out at minus 185 kilojoules per mole and it's feasible because delta G is negative at that temperature. 
another delta G calculation now, but the temperature has gone up to 1154 degrees C, which is 1427 Kelvin. So essentially, same calculation, but we've got a different temperature. And now we get delta G coming out at 0 0.028, i.e. 0. So that is that magic temperature whereby, in this case, any temperature above that, the reaction is no longer feasible because delta G is now positive. And now this calculation, so I use the ICE method, apologies for that, the ICE method, and so, see if I can get everything on the screen, there it is there, so we've got the 2SO2 and O2 in equilibrium with 2SO3, initial moles of SO2 is 1 and O2 is 5, so we wouldn't have any SO3 initially. We're told at equilibrium that 82% of the SO2 has gone, so that's going to drop by 0.82 because 82% of 1 is 0.82. So that'll go down to 0.18. There's a 2 to 1 ratio here. So this is going to drop by 0.41, i.e. half of that. So 0.5 and losing 0.41 goes to 0.09. And how much SO3 would be produced? Well, we've got a 1 to 1 ratio between the SO2 and SO3. So if 0.82 goals of that, 0.82 of that will be formed. So there's the equilibrium moles of SO3. We must work in concentrations for KC calculations. And so we need to divide by the volume in dm cubed, which is 0.25. So we need to divide all of those by 0.25. So there's your equilibrium concentrations. And now we need to just put those values into our KC expression. So there it is there. There it is with the values. And we get a KC value of 57.6. And the units, we've got moles per decimeter cubed squared on the top and moles per decimeter cubed cubed on the bottom. So essentially, they will cancel with those. So we're left with one lot of moles per decimeter cubed on the bottom, which comes out at mol minus 1 dm cubed or dm cubed mol minus 1. They don't really mind which way around they go. Final part of the question is all the explanation questions. So the first one, explain what would happen to the pressure as the system was allowed to reach equilibrium. Essentially we're going from 3 moles of gas to 2 and so the pressure would decrease because there are fewer moles of gas going over to the right hand side. We're told that the value of Kc for the equilibrium decreases with an increase in temperature. So essentially, an increase in temperature must be driving the equilibrium in reverse. Increase in temperature always favours endothermic reactions. So the forward reaction must be exothermic with a negative delta H sign. And because Kc is decreasing, that means the SO3 yield gets less. And then the final part of the question, one of these, explain in terms of Kc. Well, you can see in red there, and I would encourage you to do this, just get in your answer. Kc doesn't change, so there's always a watermark for that. So we've got to explain why Kc, or how, it, how at the end of this Kc doesn't change. It's probably easier if I move down to here. There's the Kc expression. Excess O2 is essentially going to increase the denominator and therefore lower Kc. And so the equilibrium responds by moving forwards to increase the uh, numerator term and therefore increase the SO3. So actually what I've written here is good enough for all of the marks as long as you mention that Kc doesn't change. So excess oxygen increases this, the denominator increases which would lower Kc or knock it out of equilibrium so to restore Kc, so there Kc can't change, there's that bit there the top term must increase or the numerator must increase and therefore the equilibrium has to shift to the right to increase and that thing says SO3 concentration